State Representative Adam Zemke. I'm putting you on the spot. Who is the lead singer of Jesus Jones? You know, unfortunately, Michael Patrick, I don't think I'm going to be able to answer that one. <laughs> Do you even know? You, you know Jesus Jones, don't you? You're 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 old enough to know Jesus Jones. Please tell me that. I am old enough to know of Jesus Jones, but I uh, I did not follow the artist. All right, uh, that's Mike Edmonds, who uh, Tony Cuthbert had queued up. Well, uh, thanks for joining us on the program today. You are uh, one of the lead Democrats in the state house on education policy, uh, being the minority vice chair of the House Education Committee. And now that uh, the House is gone, I guess, for the spring session anyway. I want to kind of get your feel on how you feel uh, the Republicans did by education uh, so far this term. Well, I would say that the uh, initiatives uh, that uh, have been pretty bipartisan supported have been pretty good this term, in fact. You know, um, uh, overall, I think that the education initiatives that were funded in the budget that passed with wide bipartisan support uh, are pretty good. You know, this is one of the better budgets that I've had a chance to participate in uh, during my time in the House. Uh, and I think part of that goes to the uh, chairs of the uh, school aid subcommittees. I sit on the school aid subcommittee as well, which deals with all education funding. And I think uh, hats off to my minority vice chair, uh, Sarah Roberts, as well as uh, Tim Kelly, who is the chair of the House side, and then Jeff Hansen. I think that they put together uh, collectively a very, uh, a, you know, pretty good budget for education. There were things in that we wanted to see happen regarding uh, some uh, STEM initiatives. There was a huge at-risk funding component increase, which, of course, is something I care very much about, um, you know, being that that funding goes to target support services for students who really need it the most. Um, and then, you know, one of the things that I'm uh, particularly excited about is, is we do have uh, some very concerning uh, statistics out there that support that Michigan has a huge literacy issue. And uh, at the start of this term, uh, I was appointed by the governor to a bipartisan work group to uh, come up with solutions, and those solutions turned into resources in the budget. So there's money behind them as well. And uh, that means that they have uh, a likelihood of actually doing what we intend them to do. So we're actually so putting money behind uh, third grade reading. Yes, we are. Yes, there's, uh, you know, in various line items, uh, a little over $30 million uh, that goes towards initiatives that follow, very closely follow the recommendations put forward by our bipartisan commission. Now, one of the big issues in the last week of uh, this uh, session has been whether we should and to what extent we should have a state standard for how we evaluate teachers. Why do we need to have a statewide standard for how uh, administrators should decide how a teacher is doing? Really because we need to ensure that there's a standard of quality uh, across the state. You know, uh, it, it, it should never be a situation where a teacher uh, could be uh, compared against one of his or her peers and, uh, and they could be evaluated 100% differently. And under the law and, and really under the legislation that is pending, uh, put forward by Senator Papel, that is allowed to happen. And, uh, and for those of us who want to ensure that educator evaluations, and, and that means for administrators and for teachers, uh, are of a consistency and quality, you need to have some minimum state standard. The other thing is, is that, you know, uh, I came from the private sector. I'm an engineer uh, by background. And uh, we always have performance evaluations. Performance evaluations are an important part of understanding where you need to improve as a good employee, as a good professional. And uh, without a good quality uh, performance evaluation, then uh, it's very difficult to target additional professional development or support services to help you uh, in areas that you may just, not even to your own knowledge, be uh, struggling in. And now, so you need, you need a good quality evaluation system. So, well, we've been following this debate here in Lansing. I've got to say that the uh, debate is pretty detailed and pretty in the weeds, and so I don't want to get too deep into it. But for the average person, how would you describe why it's been so difficult to get a standard through the Michigan legislature? One word, uh, and that's politics. Is that right? That, yep. Now, now, why would politics play into this? That's a very good question, because they shouldn't. You know, the... Uh, the, this process started four years ago, as, you, as you've said, it, you know, it started playing out a long time ago um, when the uh, Council on Educator Effectiveness was charged by the governor to put forward some recommendations. 
It took them two years and 13 pilot studies across the state to develop the recommendations, but they were very widely received. And uh, then at that point, uh, then Representative, now Senator Margaret O'Brien and I put forward a package of bills uh, that was supported by uh, groups that generally don't get coffee together. We'll put it that way. You know, uh, all of the administrator groups, the uh, principal groups, the, both uh, the teachers' unions in the state, as well as reform groups like Great Lakes Education Project and uh, Students First. And so uh, you would think that that legislation, um, you know, even when it passed the House with wide bipartisan support, could have sailed through. But I'd say that the answer really is politics. And you'll have to uh, ask uh, Senator Pablo as to uh, why he, uh, why he uh, you know, didn't move that legislation. So you think Senator Pavlo, who happens to be running for Congress, you think he's playing politics with this issue? I think that there are some politics involved in this, yeah. Adam Zemke, State Representative and the Minority Vice Chair of the House Education Committee. Thanks for joining us on the program. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You're listening to the Michigan Big Show starring Michael Patrick Shields. I'm Kyle Mlynn, editor of the MERS Newsletter, filling in today.